How are you all doing? Um, Peter McMahon here, European Industrial Chillers. Um, out doing the Christmas run, uh, great to be meeting people for tea and for lunches and um, just catching up. Some some clients I haven't seen till, since probably this time last year, um, or even a couple of years for some of them. So um, great to be out and about meeting you all. Um, just, uh, just the one opportunity we have to say thank you for uh, the work we get throughout the year. And a couple of interesting conversations um, have come up as well. So hence the reason doing a quick uh, vlog. So um, yesterday in particular, I was talking to a client and it came up about um, buffer tank positioning and sizing. Um, and actually coincidentally then we did an email in the very same day, possibly because it's the same job that different consultant is working on. And that, that tends to happen when you come across that every so often. Um, but there, there, firstly, we cover this. I cover this um, in detail in my designer training program. So anyone that hasn't had the designer training program, it's a three part series. And in one of the parts, I go over um, the consequences, the various options with regard to positioning buffer tank. So whether on the flow, on the return, or in the middle as a decoupler. And I go through some of the consequences of each position. Um, and normally, if we get an inquiry from a client, um, we will make a recommendation. We'll often actually do with design, drawing, and show where all the components should be. And particularly nowadays with, um, you know, heat pumps and you might have a, a, an air to water heat pump or a multifunction heat pump and then a water to water booster. And there's a lot of components that we typically do a design drawing um, to show people how all the products can be integrated. Because we know a lot of these technologies are new for some, some people. Um, the other point, by the way, is with regard to volume. Um, and again, this question actually came up yesterday um, or a, a part of a discussion I had yesterday with a, another consultant um, where he had a client and they were designing for a, a load that they weren't going to have uh, early on and when they start they were only going to have uh, one line out of about five lines in operation um, it was a pharmaceutical project um, but they need so they need to design for the full load but they weren't going to have it early days um, and I said well, look water volume is probably going to be much more important um, uh, you obviously do need to consider capacity control so being able to step down to such a lower capacity that you don't have a massively oversized system that's banging in bang, banging out so whether it's a scroll compressor screw compressor non-inverter inverter or, or possibly even turbo core and um, they all um, are considerations and um, but volume more importantly and um, so normally if you had let's say four liters per kilowatt recommended or sorry uh, minimum then maybe seven liters per kilowatt, and um, you could have a recommended of 10 liters per kilowatt. And by the way, if it's a multifunction heat pump, it's always more because you have more modes of operation, more changes, more off cycle time. And um, so the volume tends to be a lot, a lot uh, higher. So anyway, just um, wanted to touch base on a couple of those things that come up. And um, we do, of course, cover all this, as I said, in our designer training program. Um, so if we've done it for you and you want to recap, let me know, no problem at all. We're happy to come back or perhaps you have new engineers or possibly you couldn't even attend when I was doing the last time. Um, so touch base uh, with Amber to rebook that in um, and she's just uh, uh, sales at eicl.e um, or I think it's amber.jan at eicl.e um, or myself if you want, peter.mcmahon at eicl.e. Okay, hope you all have a good Christmas uh, for anyone I don't see and um, let's hope for a great year again next year.